Hey ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. This is uh, part two. We're looking at uh, the female reproductive system. Uh, we're going to focus on two things. Uh, it's going to be on eugenesis and also uh, structure and function. Okay, so let's get right into it. So let's get into eugenesis. Basically what it is is the development of the egg. Uh, the biological term for the egg is called the ovum and uh, plural would be uh, ova. Okay, and this occurs within the ovary. Okay. Females have all the ova in follicles. So if we have our egg, there's a developing follicle surrounding tissue uh, around it, which uh, everything that they have, all the females' ova, are going to be in the ovaries uh, at birth. So they don't develop any more eggs as they go, unlike males that uh, develop more sperm as they get older. Okay. And uh, females release one ovum per month. So it takes about a month for it to mature, and then it gets released, uh, but only one per month. Okay, And even though there's two ovaries, only one of them is going to be doing it per month. Sometimes there can be multiple uh, ones coming down, and that's how uh, twins are formed. Okay, so eugenesis is the process. Uh, this is what we're looking at. This is just a big overview. As you can see, it starts out as a primary oocyte. This oocyte just means an immature egg. Uh, and as you can see around it is the developing follicle. They're both maturing together. So the egg's maturing and the follicle is maturing around it. Uh, growing mature, follicle ruptured. So this part right here, there's a special term, which we'll see in a minute, called it's called a graphene follicle. And as you can see, once it matures fully, this follicle bursts and it releases what we call is a secondary oocyte, which is essentially for us, we're just going to call it the ovum. Okay, uh, and this is process is called ovulation. Okay, so let's get into the details of the process. Uh, the very first one here, primary oocyte, uh, and it begins to mature within the follicle. Okay, so you can write that down. And when we have a fully mature follicle, it's called a graphene follicle. So just some terminology for us. And we just talked about ovulation, and that's the bursting of that graphene follicle to release the mature ovum. And then finally, uh, after ovulation, this follicle that's left over uh, has a specific name and a specific job. Okay, And it's called the corpus luteum, and it secretes hormones, which we're going to see next day when we talk about hormone regulation. Okay, So these are this picture here, uh, they're just snapshots uh, of time. It doesn't actually rotate in order, like in a circular motion inside the ovary, right? This one would just stay here and it just starts maturing and maturing and maturing and it actually bursts, okay? So pause that if you haven't, getting it, haven't got it down yet. And after eugenesis occurs, so I guess this is kind of after it's been released, uh, the ovum's directed, so here's where the ovary was, and it gets directed out in the fallopian tube, which we also call the oviduct, um, by these kind of feather-like protrusions called fimbriae. And what they do is they kind of make this wave-like motion, which we call undulating, and it assists that egg down the fallopian tube or towards the fallopian tube. And then once it's in the fallopian tube or the oviduct, cilia, which are those tiny little micro hairs, uh, do the sweeping motion, and it kind of propels the ovum towards the uterus, so down this way. Okay. Uh, we'll talk about this later, but this is where the sperm is going to uh, encounter. It's going to encounter them in the oviduct, and that's where fertilization takes place. And then the fertilized egg or the unfertilized egg uh, will come through here. If it's unfertilized, it'll pass. And if it's fertilized, it'll embed in the uterus. Speaking of the uterus, uh, here it is. So we, we consider this the womb. This is where the uh, embryo is going to develop or the fetus is going to develop. Uh, as you can see, it's very thick-walled, and it's for a reason. Uh, this thick walled part is called the myometrium. Uh, myo, you can think essentially, essentially means the muscle layer. So during birth, uh, the uterus is contracting. Uh, during uh, menstruation, the uterus is contracting. And uh, that's what's doing the contracting part. This is the muscle, muscular part. The most important part for us is actually the endometrium. And that's this layer right here. So it's the inner layer. And this is where the endometrium starts building up and eventually is shed during menstruation. Like I said, it's where the fetus develops. 
And then on the bottom part, the lower part of the uterus, what we call the cervix. So as you can see, it's this narrowing part. And the function of the cervix, cervix is essentially uh, controlling what enters and exits. So when it's contracted, uh, what happens is it's going to be allowing uh, sperm in and allowing uh, the menstrual fluid out. And if it's wide open, uh, or sorry, then if it's closed, it won't be allowing that. Okay. So when it contracts and relaxes to allow sperm in and menstrual fluid out, or painfully, a baby out. Okay, so you can pause that and get it all down. And then finally, it's kind of in your face, sorry about that, hopefully you're not in the computer lab right now, but you know, it's just anatomy. Uh, the vagina is lined with mucosal salts. So again, this is meant for uh, allow sperm to travel, because sperm needs a medium in order to travel. Okay. Uh, we also obviously know that it's the birth canal. This is where the baby's going to come through. And then we have the clitoris, which is the anterior end of the labia, which is just the folds of skin. You have the uh, labia major and minor. And just another uh, side note that we probably mentioned in the male, uh, during sexual arousal, blood's going to rush to the labia and then also the clitoris. Uh, and so it's going to actually swell. It's the same uh, rectal tissue. Um, same as the erectile tissue in the, in the penis. So when the blood rushes, that's when it's going to swell. Okay. Uh, what do we need to know? Uh, you need to be able to identify and give the functions of all of these. The ovaries, what's it doing? Follicles and corpus luteum. The oviducts, the uterus, endometrium and myometrium. And then the cervix, vagina, clitoris. And then finally, just generally be able to describe the stages and steps of eugenesis. So hopefully that should be pretty good. This should be a nice, easy one before we transition into female hormones, uh, which will be quite complicated. Okay, have a wonderful night.